India has reported 3.17 lakh new COVID cases. That's the highest in eight months. India has also reported 9,287 Omicron cases so far. That's up 3.63% since yesterday. The daily positivity rate has risen to 16.41% from 15.13% earlier. Now, let's take a look at a comparison between Delhi and Mumbai. If you compare, Delhi has reported 12,306 new COVID cases in the last 24 hours, whereas Mumbai has reported 5,708. Delhi has reported 43 deaths. Uh, that's the highest in the third wave. Mumbai has reported 12 deaths. Uh, the positivity rate in Mumbai is 10.72%, while the positivity rate in Delhi is 21.48%. Now, during the briefing by the health ministry, Rajesh Bhushan spoke about the hospitalization rate. दूसरी सर्ज की तुलना में दिल्ली में तीसरी सर्ज के दौरान जो लोग अस्पतालों में भर्ती हो रहे हैं या जिनको अस्पताल में बेड की आवश्यकता पड़ रही है, उनका नंबर बहुत कम, significantly lower. दूसरी सर्ज की तुलना में तीसरी सर्ज में एक्टिव केसेस के मुकाबले होने वाली मृत्यु बहुत सिग्निफिकेंटली घट गई हैं। प्रिकॉशंस लेनी है, पर्सनल प्रिकॉशंस, मास्क के मास्क के रूप में, सोशल डिस्टेंसिंग के रूप में और प्रिकॉशंस जो सोशल मेजर्स हैं उनको अपनाना है। इनको कम करने का भी वक्त बिल्कुल नहीं आया है कि इस लो रिलेटिवली जो मोस्ट वल्नरेबल है वो वो हैं जिनको की को मॉबिलिटीज हैं उम्र में ज्यादा है इसलिए फिर बिंती है कि प्रिकॉशन डोज लगे the health ministry in a new COVID guidance on children advised against the use of antivirals or monoclonal antibodies on children less than 18 years of age, irrespective of the severity of the infection. The guidance also added that masks are not recommended for children aged 5 years and under, that children aged 6 to 11 years may wear a mask depending on the ability of the child to use the mask safely and appropriately under the guidance of parents or guardians. Now, Maharashtra has announced that schools will be opening in Mumbai and Maharashtra for all classes from next week. This was announced by the state's education minister, who also said that schools will have to ensure that COVID protocols are in place. Mumbai schools are preparing to reopen in as quickly as four days. The decision was announced today, not just for the state capital, but the entire state. मंडे 24 से जो है वो स्कूल शुरू हो रहे हैं पहली से 12वीं तक और प्री प्राइमरी स्कूल का भी शुरू करने का निर्णय हमने लिया है लेकिन ये निर्णय लेते हुए वक्त हमने जैसा कहा था पहले भी कि पूरी तरह से एसओपीज का पालन किया जाएगा एवरेज डेली केसेस आर एट अबाउट 44000 ऑलमोस्ट 13 टाइम्स मोर देन एट द स्टार्ट ऑफ द मंथ बट द चीफ मिनिस्टर हैज अप्रूव्ड द डिसीजन एट द कैबिनेट मीटिंग हेल्ड दिस इवनिंग बेस्ड ऑन द कोविड टास्क फोर्सेस रिकमेंडेशन एज नंबर्स हैव बिगन टू फॉल the R number in Maharashtra has fallen almost to the levels it was at the beginning of the third wave. It is currently at 1.07. The R number is a good way of rating coronavirus or any other disease's ability to spread. The state is focusing on increasing the pace of vaccinations too. 15 to 18 ka vaccination karne ke liye bilkul bahut priority isko di gai hai. Aur abhi to is sabhi schools colleges band hone ke naate थोड़ा उनको ऑर्गेनाइज्ड करके उनको वैक्सीनेशन सेंटर पे लेके आना थोड़े चैलेंजिंग निश्चित तौर पर होता है। स्कूल्स वर शट आफ्टर द क्रिसमस वेकेशन एंड प्रिंसिपल्स आर रिलीव्ड दैट दिस टाइम द क्लोजर हैज बीन लिमिटेड टू अ फ्यू वीक्स। we have been waiting for this news with bated breath and been wanting to welcome the children back in, in our midst. The learning gaps have been tremendous. So the news of reopening the schools is a, a sign of relief for all of us. But the happiest are the children themselves. We have kids who just want to get back to school. Meeting our classmates, our teachers in real life has been so rewarding in November and December 2021. It felt wonderful to be back to that good old classroom atmosphere. There are a few learning gaps in the online mode of schooling and we would have to put in an additional work to make up for this loss. 
now that physical schools will resume, it will be much easier for me to cope up better with my studies. Children were thrilled to return to school last year, but the arrival of the Omicron variant and the third wave meant that schools had to revert to online teaching after the Christmas vacation. But to everyone's relief, this time around, the closure has been limited to just a few weeks. In Mumbai with camera person Sanjay Mandal, Saurabh Gupta, NDTV. Now, a special report on the struggle to get compensation for COVID deaths. Many families don't know what they can do when an appeal is rejected. There should be more proactive measures from state governments to help beneficiaries. Supriya's 75-year-old father was in hospital for 28 days after testing positive for COVID. Eight days after being discharged, he died at home. But the family's claim for compensation for 50,000 rupees has been rejected, stating the death happened at home and after the father was negative. The top court has wrapped states including Kerala for insensitivity, asking why wait for petitioners instead of taking initiative to reach out to them. That would have made it far easier for people like 18-year-old Fatima, solely dependent on her grandparents, but her 80-year-old grandfather died in the hospital with COVID in May. She went to claim compensation to the local Akshaya Center but was told the internet is down. Back in school, the class 12 student hasn't managed to go again. <laughs> Kerala government has received 27,000 petitions for compensation, although the total number of COVID deaths is well over 51,000. Despite the top court's tough words, the government says the process may take time. Cases have been recorded and the deaths have been recorded properly. But the amount of applications are less. Most of the deaths in Kerala have been actually uh, declared late because many were backlog deaths which were cleared later. And for them to really uh, get to know that they have been included in the list and then to apply and for the papers to be processed and so on will take time. It will not be difficult to really uh, find out every single person and record them and give them the benefits. Losing a family member to COVID is in itself traumatic and this pandemic has been making life harder for ordinary people. Amid all this, for state governments to reach out to possible beneficiaries for compensation is only going to go a long way. With camera person SP Babu, Sneha Koshi for NDTV. Now, the news of the 17-year-old boy from a border village of Arunachal Pradesh being allegedly abducted by Chinese People's Liberation Army from near the McMohan Line, the same area where there was a standoff with the Chinese PLA in 2018. Indian Army has informed China over the hotline of the boy being missing from near the LAC. All this on a day when Arunachal Pradesh is celebrating 50 years of statehood. 17 years old Miram Tarong went missing near the border with China in a remote part of Arunachal Pradesh. The BJP's Lok Sabha MP from Arunachal Pradesh, Tapir Gao, posted this message, tagging the Prime Minister, Home Minister and Defence Minister. He said that the Chinese army has abducted Miram of Jido village on Tuesday from inside Indian territory, Lungta Jor area where China built 3 to 4 kilometers road inside India in 2018. This is the area the MP named. Shiungla area of Bishing village of Upper Siang district. Army had opened up hotline with Chinese PLA to find whereabouts of the missing boy. Hotlines were also opened up last year when five youths from Upper Subansri district went missing, only to be returned by China after 10 days. NDTV has learned from Army and Arunachal Pradesh government sources that the incident took place on January 18 and it was first reported back by the locals to the district administration on January 19 and now government 
in the state has informed center and channel of communication through army has been opened up, information has been provided to the Chinese PLA about this missing boy. But Rahul Gandhi has tweeted, questioning Prime Minister Modi's silence. China claims all of Arunachal. This incident is the latest example of an alleged Chinese incursion into Indian territory. Both India and China have a difference in perception in terms of where the LSE actually lies. And Chinese intrusion into Arunachal Pradesh is also nothing new. But what is crucial here is the location where the incident has taken place. In 2018, in the same area, there was a standoff between the Chinese PLA and Indian Army after local Indian villagers stopped Chinese PLA and Chinese construction workers who came well inside the Indian territory to build roads there. In Guwahati, Ratnadeep Chaudhary for NDTV. The BJP announced 34 candidates in its first list for Goa, but a big name was missing, Utpal Parikar, the son of former Chief Minister Manohar Parikar. The BJP has said they have given Utpal Parikar multiple options and they expect him not to take the ticket that's been offered to him by the Aam Aadmi Party. Meanwhile, in the first list, two couples have got tickets. In the BJP's Goa list, 34 names, but not of Utpal Parikar, son of the Goa BJP icon, the late Manohar Parikar. Utpal had publicly claimed he would like to contest from the Panjim seat, his father's bastion. But instead, the BJP has given the seat to Babush Monserrat, the Panjim MLA, who had crossed over from the Congress, someone who has faced multiple charges, including of rape. Utpal says he may still go ahead and contest from Panjim and will make his position clear in a few days. The Shiv Sena had said that if Utpal contests, all non-BJP parties should back him. A BJP minister defended the choice, advising Utpal not to contest. My personal advice to uh, Shri Utpal Parikar would be that his father built the BJP. Don't rebel against the BJP. Babush Mansarat, who has already got a ticket for Panjim constituency, has done a lot of work in Panjim. They all elected Babush Mansarat because they found that he was doing good work. I also was Pratap Singh Rane, one of the longest serving chief minister in the state of Goa's son, but nobody gave anything to me at a platter. That at least in Goa, from the ticket distribution, it seems no party really can say that we don't believe in family politics. Whether it's the BJP, which has given two husband-wife couples tickets, one is Vishwajit Rane and his wife, and his wife, of course, takes on his father, uh, you know, Pratap Singh Rane, who's contesting on a Congress ticket. Then you have Jennifer and Babush Monserrat. Babush Monserrat, of course, getting the Panji ticket. When asked, Vishwajit Rane claims he had no say in his wife's selection, even though she is a first-timer. I have not made any recommendation or given any names or anything that I want a particular person to be given a ticket. He was also non-committal when asked if his father would back out of a family fight. I don't know how things will unfold in the days to come, he said. An NDTV bureau report. Samajwadi Party leader Akhilesh Yadav is likely to contest next month's UP election from the Karhal seat in Mainpuri, which is the Yadav family stronghold party sources have said. Karhal has voted for Samajwadi candidates in every election since 1993, except for five years between 2002 and 2007, when the BJP flipped the seat. The Amar Jawan Jyoti flame at India Gate will be extinguished after 50 years on Friday to be merged then with the flame at the National War Memorial with an appropriate military ceremony. The Amar Jawan Jyoti was constructed as a memorial for Indian soldiers who were killed in action in the 1971 Indo-Pak War which India won, a leading to the creation of Bangladesh. It was inaugurated by then Prime Minister Indira Gandhi in 1972. Uh, Rajiv Ranjan now joins us on the phone line for more. And Rajiv, uh, why this decision is going to shift? Why is this decision going to shift? Look, the first thing is to say that because in two places, there was a lot of difficulty in one place. There was a lot of difficulty in one place. And when it was three years ago, the National War Memorial has become a memorial in the United States. And there are about 25,000 people in the United States. शहीदों के नाम वहां उल्लेखित है और जहां वहां पर बकायदा जो है शहीद के परिवार वाले आते हैं इस वजह से अब जो अमर जवान का ज्योति का जो है उसका मसाल जो है उसको मर्ज कर दिया जाएगा नेशनल वार मेमोरियल के मसाल के साथ में जितने अब सरकारी कार्यक्रम होते हैं वो नेशनल वार मेमोरियल में ही होते हैं इस वजह से कहना यह है कि अब एक ही जगह रहेगा दो जगह करने का कोई मतलब नहीं रह जाता है जी 
All right, uh, Rajiv, uh, they're telling us that it was decide this decision was made to shift the Amar Jawan Jyoti and merge it with the National War Memorial so that there aren't two uh, separate uh, places there and uh, so that functions can take place at the National War Memorial Flame where there's also a memorial to fallen soldiers. And finally, we leave you with a look at Republic Day preparations. <laughs> 